Okay, um, so today we're going to be discussing how specifying tungsten alloy can help to overcome the many design and procurement challenges involved with complex manufacturing projects. To do this, I'm pleased to be joined by two tungsten alloy experts from the WolfMet team. First of all, uh, one of the presenters is Steve Wright, who's our commercial manager. Steve's uh, been in the business over 25 years and has that experience in advanced materials uh, from the aerospace and defense industries. Steve also looks after the, uh, our largest WolfMet account and is responsible for making sure the projects, uh, you know, obviously uh, delivered over the line on time to budget and to the specifications required uh, from the customer's requirements. He might allude to one of the two of these later on in the, in the, uh, in the webinar. Also joining us is Brenton Brookers, who's our manufacturing manager. And Brenton has been with m &I Materials for over 15 years and has a wealth of manufacturing experience within various engineering disciplines. Brenton is also our resident guru for all things tungsten, uh, a hat he routinely wears in, support, in supporting WolfMet customers uh, to help them understand uh, the applications of tungsten alloys and helping them to realize their project requirements. So with uh, the introductions over, I can now hand you to Steve Wright. Hello everybody. So, what is tungsten alloy? In the great words of Spock himself, it's an alloy, Jim, but not as we know it. Tungsten alloy is actually a metal matrix composite consisting of tungsten particles in a metallic binder. In the following slides, we're going to show you how we produce tungsten alloy and in doing so you'll pro hopefully be able to identify the aspects of a flexible manufacturing process that can be leveraged to your individual advantage. Next slide please. There it is, there's Spock, feet have gone. Okay. The melting point of tungsten is 3,422 degrees, meaning that by the time you've melted it, there's actually nothing you can pour it into that can contain it. So you can't cast it, you can't extrude it, and it's not very easily formed or forged. So the only way we can make it is through powder metrology, which we, we use to form a metal matrix composite. We're now going to walk you through a manufacturing process. Over to you, Brenton. Thanks, Steve, and welcome to everyone who's who's listening. Um, as, as Steve has mentioned, the process to manufacture tungsten heavy alloys starts with mixing our powder. Uh, at WolfMet, we make a range of different materials, and we start at about 90% tungsten, and then we go up in increments to around 97% tungsten. And what we do is we place tungsten powder and what we call binder elements into a mixing drum to a very precise recipe and we mix the powder for a number of hours. Once this process is completed, we sieve the powder to remove any impurities that have been made, made it into the mix. Um, and the sieving also removes any agglomeration from the mixed powder. And the agglomeration is the tendency of the powder to clump together during mixing. So once the mix has been completed, powder is labelled and stored ready for the pressing operation. So the pressing operation usually takes place in, in what we call a cold isostatic press. And you can see in the picture on the right hand side of the, of the page, it's a picture of our press that we have here at M&I. Um, for people who are not familiar with this process or haven't seen this before, we have generic tooling called cans and bags which is a picture on the left-hand side of the page, you can see. This tooling is generally either rectangular or round and usually comprises of a metal can with a rubber bag placed inside it. Uh, and hence, we get the name can and bag. So we select the appropriate can and bag and we get the one that's the most appropriate size for the job and fill it with the required amount of powder. Once it's been filled, the power braider is vibrated ever so slightly to compact it very loosely. And finally, a seal is placed on top of the bag, ready to go into the press. So we have a can and bag which has been filled and sealed, and we then place it into the cage 
and then the whole cage is lowered into the isostatic press. And in the picture on your screen, you can see the cage is being lowered into the press. Once it's completely lowered into the press, the lid comes over and closes to seal the pressurizing chamber. At this point, we then apply extreme pressure to the cannon bag, anything up to around 2,400 bar. Now, just to give you some comparisons, um, the deepest part of the ocean is the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. At around 10 kilometers deep, you get about 1,000 bar pressure. So to get to 2,400 bar, we would need to go around 24 kilometers under the sea level, which is obviously impossible anywhere on Earth. And this extreme pressure that we place the cannon bag under changes the powder and produces a block, or what we call a green billet. Once we have our green billet from the isostatic press, we then move that billet into the forming area. Now the forming in this process, the forming process, we focus on getting the block into a consistent and uniform size. Now usually because the pressing operation is done in a, in a rubber bag, it is not particularly flat, it's not particularly square or defined in shape. So generally we'll always take a billet and mill the top and bottom faces making it flat and parallel. Once it's been milled, we then move it to the bandsaw and cut it into consistently sized billets. And there are three major reasons for these forming operations. Firstly, we improve the quality and the sizing of the billet being sintered. Secondly, we reduce the amount of material that is being sintered to an absolute minimum. And thirdly, any powder that is removed at this stage can be reprocessed back into usable powder. So this forming operation produces a part that is closely aligned to the finished shape and we've removed as much material as possible before we do the sintering operations. And this is one of the advantages of using WolfMet, that we can optimize the amount of powder used in the forming operation and reduce the cost to the customer. Steve. Thank you, Brenton. So as you can see, the size of the billet we produce is not determined by the size of any tooling or dies. There's no expensive tooling required to set up the custom sizes. And as we are running a batch manufacturing process, we can operate on very low minimum order quantities. The manufacturing process is extremely flexible, meaning that it is easy and economical to produce the exact size of billet required. Now, tungsten isn't the cheapest of materials you'll ever buy. So for someone purchasing bar and billets to machine themselves, it's important to realize that we, the material can be ordered from us in sizes not limited by the industry standard sizes you would purchase other materials, metals, such as steel and aluminium, but in sizes that produce the minimum amount of waste, which will lead to shorter machining times. And because tungsten alloy is very abrasive, this in turn leads to less tool wear. All these factors combine to reduce your manufacturing costs. And for someone designing parts, there's the added benefit of not being constrained by the size of available bar stock. The WolfMet Advantage. We're now going to explain how our flexible material production philosophy can be taken to the next level when combined with our in-house machining capability to maximize material efficiencies and cost saving opportunities. So thanks, Steve. Um, so from the process we've already described previously, um, it might be clear to some of you that there are a number of opportunities to probably improve that process even further. Um, as Steve has mentioned, the cost of the raw material and tungsten in particular is quite high. So in WolfMet, we try and focus on being as efficient with the use of tungsten powder as we possibly can be. Uh, one way that we do, do this is to use a process called near net pressing. Now, near net pressing is a, a manufacturing method that creates a final billet shape at the press operation rather than through a forming process as I've talked about previously. Um, now this process is suited to regular or production based volumes and that's due to the need to produce specific tooling for it. 
Uh, using this process usually eliminates the need for any forming operations after the pressing operation. And this process starts in exactly the same way as before by mixing and sieving our powder to the required recipe. So once we have our mixed powder, we then take a mold that has the desired shape and the size of the part we require. And we fill the mold with powder. Again, we place this mold into the isostatic press and pressurize it anywhere up to about 2,400 bar. Now, once the press is run through its cycle, the powder should take the shape of the mold. And you can see that in the bottom picture on your screen. The part that's in the picture on the screen has been pressed in this shape. And you can already see that because it's already the shape that we need, it's eliminated the need for the, the forming operations I've described previously. The benefit of this type of process is that although the sintered weight of the part hasn't changed, we've eliminated hours of work and labor from the forming operations. And this process is ultimately the most efficient use of powder that we can achieve. So to give you an example, we had one customer whose part uh, we produced regularly. Uh, every time we made a batch of these parts, we used about one ton of mixed powder. Now by implementing this near net process, we reduced that powder usage to around half of that, 450 kilos. And additionally, we also removed about one and a half hours worth of manufacturing time per part from the process. So once the part's been pressed to the desired shape, it usually goes direct to the sintering operation and into the furnace. And you can see in the bottom picture on your screen, the sinter shape is a perfect replication of the press shape, although it is much smaller at this stage. Um, just during sintering, parts naturally shrink as the material is bonded together. Did you want to add anything, Steve? Yes, thanks, Brenton. So, we've shown you how through the use of preformed near net shapes, it's possible to produce a sintered form containing the minimum amount of machining stock. You'll already have realized how this near net shape is going to deliver reduced manufacturing costs through reduced waste and shorter machining times. Next, we're going to show you how to maximize these efficiencies by passing the sintered form directly into a state-of-the-art machine shop that is set up specifically for the machining of tungsten alloy. Back at you, Brenton. Thanks. So the next step in the process is to move the sintered forms into the machine shop for final machining. Um, our specialist machine shop here at Wolfmet has, has a variety of machines and capabilities, and we accept work from three-axis milling right the way up to five-axis milling, uh, we have turning capabilities, wiring, electro discharge machining, deep hole drilling and grinding. Uh, we are dedicated specifically to machining tungsten heavy alloys and we usually only machine this uh, specialist material. However, there are a number of processes that are tricky in tungsten and our engineering team is always available to assist any designers who have queries about what is possible in our material and what is not possible. Uh, at WolfMet, we can also offer solutions to customers who have parts that require treatments following machinings. For instance, uh, non-destructive testing processes, so penetrant floor detection and ultrasonic testing, uh, plating, nickel plating, etc., uh, and any other painting or priming requirements. We have a range of approvals from our aerospace customers that can usually accommodate any requirement that is needed. Uh, so in summary, when we have parts and production schedules that allow it, WolfMet can optimize the production process to really get the most efficient use of powder to produce the finished components. And as you can see from the process in the picture, there are minimal steps. And although the, it does have some setup costs, it pays dividends in the simplicity of the production process, the efficient use of powder, and the shortest possible machining times. Steve. For the engineers and designers out there with new parts or concepts on your CAD screen, a WolfMet powder to part solution incorporating near net forms allows you to concentrate on designing the best part possible, knowing we can produce it as economically as possible. For the purchasing professionals out there, if you've serial production parts that are in need of a cost down, 
a wolf met powder to part solution incorporating near net forms may be the solution. Quality, quality control. Throughout the manufacturing process, we pay diligent attention to the quality control. Every batch of powder we produce has its mechanical and chemical properties tested and confirmed to be in accordance with ASTM Beast 777 in our on site laboratory. Every sintered form we produce has full traceability back to the individual batches of powder used to create it, and every machine part we produce is confirmed to be within dimensional tolerances. Regarding quality management systems, we operate in accordance to both ISO 9001 and for aerospace parts, AS 9100 Rep D. Mechanical and chemical properties of tungsten alloys are defined by two aerospace standards, ASTM B777 and AMS 7725. At WolfMet, we are able to manufacture material tested and certified in accordance to both these specifications. MI Materials is also accredited to ISO 14001 for environmental management, and we even have a Queen's Award for Enterprise for International Trade. WolfMet only produces tungsten materials and components from those materials. We are truly a specialist manufacturer with no distractions and have been for well over 40 years. We have qualified metallurgists who work in a first class laboratory and we're able to provide technical support and design for manufacturer advice when required. As demonstrated, we offer what we call a powder to parts, end to end service, meaning we have complete control over all aspects of the alloy and component production. We control the product quality, control lead times, control service, control cost, you got it, we're control freaks. We stress that we only work with tungsten alloy, but there's, there's more, much more to being one of the world's leading tungsten alloy manufacturers than producing material and parts. Over the next few slides, we're gonna tell you about some of the bolt-on services we can provide on a mix and match basis as required. In aerospace, we supply a wide variety of components to aerospace primes and tier one suppliers. These components uh, usually take the form of balance and vibration, uh, reducing weights uh, used on rudders, ailerons and elevators. We're producing these parts to pre-agreed schedules and uh, depending on, on the end customers, we're operating vendor managed inventory, doing just in time deliveries to pre-agreed schedules. The parts incorporate various levels of non-destructive testing and treatments. And we even kit and pack the parts into aircraft sets for, for line side delivery. These high standards insisted on by our aerospace customers are in no way relaxed when we supply other industries. Aerospace could be considered to be the other end of the customer spectrum. To, sorry, let's start that again, shall we? Motorsport could be considered to be at the other end of the spectrum to aerospace, but we have been supplying Formula One teams with tungsten alloy ballast components for many, many years. Here, we're supplying low volume parts on very short lead times. As an example, from receipt of drawings and CAD through material manufacture, jig and fixture design and build, CNC programming, component machining through to final inspection and shipping, we've been known to complete the whole process in under a week. Brenton would always prefer longer, of course. Indeed. Science and technology is another industry we supply. And we use, these components are used for medical research and treatment. We also supply some of the world's most technically demanding scientific exper experiments. Usually, but not only for radiation shielding. These are in one off or thousands of quantities and can, can include some quite complex technical requirements, including mechanical, chemical and magnetic permeability 
um, specifications beyond the norm and multiple levels of NDT at various stages of the manufacturing process. We're now going to describe how we apply our skills and experience so, through some actual case studies. For this first case study, Brenton is going to describe how we used our Formula One experience to react quickly to an urgent aerospace requirement while still meeting the stringent quality assurance requirements of an aerospace prime. Over to you, Brenton. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, so in um, 2018, we were contacted by uh, one of our existing customers uh, to help them with an urgent demand that they had. Um, at that time, we were a tier two supplier. And when they approached us, they required around 2,200 elevator tab weights, uh, obviously for an unplanned requirement. And obviously they wanted them as soon as possible. We had never previously manufactured this component. And one of the criteria of the supply was that we had to meet the supplier quality approval process and become an approved supplier to them. The component they wanted also was made in the material that we had not used uh, extensively in the past. And additionally, after machining the part required a number of NDT and painting processes. So working closely with their local supplier quality department, we manufactured the first batch of components within four weeks and passed all the external quality inspections the first time round. A complete order of 2,200 parts was processed and delivered within 10 weeks. And then the success of this order led to a second order later in that year for another 1,300 parts and we delivered those within six weeks. Steve. Thank you, Brenton. Now it's my turn. This is how we used our 40 plus years experience manufacturing tungsten alloy to help a customer design a more reliable path. But first, a little bit of a background. A well-balanced engine crankshaft contributes significantly to the smooth running and vibration-free operation of an engine and can greatly extend the operational life of the engine. It is important in all engine types, but none more so than a high performance race or supercar engine. Because of the high density, crankshaft balance weights made from tungsten alloy are smaller than their steel counterparts, meaning that the crankcase can in turn be smaller. This means that it's possible to place the engine closer to the floor of the car, lowering the center of gravity of the car, and improving the performance and handling of the car. In this case today, we were approached by a manufacturer of high performance race engines, who due to quality issues with parts supplied by their incumbent supplier, had experienced a catastrophic failure of some crank weights. The customer visited us at our factory and through direct discussions with our engineering and manufacturing teams, we were able to work out with them a way of offering the Tungsten specific design for manufacturing offer them specific design for manufacturer advice, resulting in parts that were easier and more reliable to produce. Our final case study highlights our consultative approach to design for manufacturer advice. This customer was in the early stage of a design concept phase of a new product that would have to operate reliably for decades in a wide variety of atmospheric conditions. Our engineers work face to face with their designers, providing design for manufacturer advice. Doing so, we were able to avoid some difficult and expensive to produce features, provide advice on suitable plating, suitable for the various atmospheric conditions, and ensure that the final parts were economically viable and fit for purpose. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Stephen uh, Brenton, for that uh, interesting insight into the processes and some of the benefits with uh, Wolfram Tungsten Alloy. Um, I hope uh, all of you attending today have found the information presented uh, interesting and has hopefully provided you with some you know, useful insights in, and possible influences into how you specify uh, tungsten orders in the future. We are in shorter time. We've only got a, a few minutes left uh, and we've got a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, the first one um, is, um, is tungsten hard to machine and can I get pretty much any shape that I want? Um, I think that might be one for you, Brenton, but I'll open it up to either of you if you'd like to answer. Yeah, thanks, Martin. I'll answer this question. Um, firstly, I think there's 
probably a little bit of confusion about hardness and tungsten and if it if it's relatively easy to machine. Um, many people confuse tungsten heavy alloys with tungsten carbide. Um, tungsten carbide is obviously quite a common material, it's widely known, but it's actually the additives in the tungsten carbide that give it its hardness. The tungsten that we make here at Wolfman is tungsten heavy alloys and we don't have the additives the tungsten carbide does and therefore the hardness of our material is about the same as cast iron or steel. Relatively it's pretty easy to machine with conventional machine technology um, and standard sort of tungsten carbide tooling is fine. It does tend to be quite abrasive though so cutter life can be quite short. There are several difficult machining processes that need specialist tooling though uh, and that's probably why many of our customers prefer for Wolfmet to do the machining on the parts because they don't want the headache or the expense of purchasing the expensive tooling to do small or non-common jobs. The second part of the question, um, you can get pretty much any shape and size that you want within some constraints though. Um, there, there's quite a lot of things that we consider when we design billets and we try and get the most efficient use of powder. Um, but we're also limited by the laws of gravity and the, and the sintering process doesn't lend itself really to non-supported designs. So within reason, we can produce shapes that most of our customers require. Steve, did you want to add anything? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Brenton. Only one thing to add really, um, as Brenton's already said, it, it's, uh, it's, it's possible to produce almost any shape in tungsten alloy. Just like any material, ultimately there will be a shape or a configuration that isn't possible to produce using standard manufacturing techniques. And uh, the good thing is uh, that at Wolfmet, we know we're now able to 3D print pure tungsten. So for those impossible to machine um, parts, we now have a solution. More about that later, as Martin will say. Uh, yeah, indeed. Yeah, I will do. Thank you uh, there, Steve. Um, we've just got time for one more question. Um, are there any benefits of replacing lead weights with tungsten uh, for the purpose of ballast? Uh, is that one again for Brenton or Steve? Can you pick that one up? Go on. I'll, I'll take that one. Yes, yes, there are benefits. Um, some of them are, some are quite obvious. Some are a little bit more, more intuitive. Um, the density of tungsten alloy is around about 60% more than the density of lead. So for any given volume of lead or any given weight of lead, the size of the equivalent weight in tungsten is going to be smaller. So if the application has a size constraint uh, and for whatever reason, it might be a um, it might be for radiation shielding on some sort of device that's got to go into a tight spot, or it might be a balance weight in, a, in an aircraft. If there's a tight, uh, tight constraint, then tungsten alloy is probably going to provide the solution. More intuitive is that if you go to your um, schoolboy physics where you're, you're um, balancing seesaws, or you think of a, of a, of a crowbar where one handle is a lot longer than, than the other to give you the extra leverage, same can be true with providing balance weights for aerospace by moving, being able to move the weight further away from the balance point. It's possible to use a smaller weight to actually balance the part. And if you want a uh, much better and much more concise uh, explanation that, than this, I would suggest you visit the Wolfmet website where there's a video that talks you through it in a lot better terms.